Welcome to Theory of Pets. I'm a passionate pet owner with a drive to help others like me uncover the truth about the pet industry and what goes on behind the scenes. Thanks for tuning in to Theory of Pets. Today I have a really awesome interview that I'm excited to share with you guys. Uh, usually when I'm looking for something for my pets, whether it might be something to do with nutrition, supplements, or treatments of some kind for any kind of health ailments, I like to hear from pet parents who have had hands-on experience. I don't want to look online, do a quick Google search, come up with companies who are trying to sell their products, so of course they're going to say this works really well. I like to hear firsthand from people, and I think that's true for most of us, um, not just in pet products, but everything that we use. You know, you're not going to go out and buy a car that you've never heard of, or uh, you know, if you're shopping for um, electronics or technology, you're not going to go out there and get something that you have never heard of. Nobody that you know has ever recommended it or anything like that. You ask around, you see what other people think, you know what your friends use, your family uses, and you take advice from there. So I'm excited today. Um, I got the pleasure of speaking with a woman named Odessa Gunn. Odessa is such an inspiration to me. I was really excited to touch base with her and talk with her. Uh, basically, she's a former pro bike racer. She's always been an animal rights advocate. Uh, she was born in um, Cape, on Cape Breton Island, which is in Nova Scotia, Canada. As some of you might know that you follow me, I live in Maine, so uh, that's close to where I live on the East Coast. She came to the U.S. on an athlete's visa to race her road bike, and she actually made it to the World Cup circuit, uh, where she raced professionally for two years. Through all of this, she spent 10 years in Spain and she slowly began to dedicate a lot of her free time to animal rescue and advocacy. She actually started a trap neuter release program in Spain for stray cats um, and shipped some stray cats to Belgium and the US where they could find loving homes. She has re since returned to the US full time uh, where she helps with uh, animal rescue still in other countries and bringing animals to the US for adoption. Uh, she has helped to prepare position statements for uh, the Sonoma Humane Society. She also volunteers many hours through fostering and different uh, organizations for uh, animal welfare. She has also worked with uh, animal assisted therapy with at-risk kids which I found to be uh, a really great project. I love animal therapy and the many uses that it has. Over the past 17 years, Odessa has fostered over 200 animals. She's actually lost count, uh, but right now she has 21 rescue animals on her little farm in Forestville, California. The reason that I wanted to talk to Odessa was because she has founded her own company called Odessa's Essential Health, and uh, what it's focused on is CBD for pets. Now, if you don't know much about CBD, it stands for cannabidiol, which is a substance that is extracted from the hemp plant, and it gives all the medicinal benefits of the plant without the psychoactive effects that you find in marijuana. So a lot of pet owners immediately uh, think negatively about it because they associate it with marijuana and getting high. It's certainly not going to get your pet high. There are so many medicinal benefits for it. Um, and Odessa, she obviously through fostering hundreds of animals, she's seen a lot of different uh, conditions, a lot of different health problems. She's also seen a lot of different methods to treat those, mostly pharmaceuticals, um, were used to treat various ailments in the animals that she served. So she was really interested in finding something that was natural. Um, a lot of the pharmaceuticals that she was prescribed for her animals have nasty, long-lasting side effects. She began to look for something more organic, natural ways to treat pain and other issues that she was seeing in these animals um, and other animals that she was helping around the world as well. There is definitely a time and place for pharmaceuticals. I think we've both, both Odessa and myself agree on that, but uh, they aren't always necessary. So her line of pet CBD helps to relieve pain and other symptoms without the harmful side effects of commonly prescribed treatments that you would get from your veterinarian. So uh, I 
take a more holistic approach when treating our pets. Again, there's certainly a time and a place for pharmaceuticals, but uh, I like natural treatments as well. So uh, that's kind of how I stumbled upon um, Odessa's essential health. And once I learned more about Odessa and her backstory, and I realized that this is a woman who has worked with hundreds and hundreds of animals. She has dedicated a large portion of her life to animal welfare and you know she has looked into and done the research on these products I as well have done a lot of research on CBD it is definitely something that's controversial both in the human and the pet industry I would highly recommend doing some research it is a a uh, fairly newer treatment that's kind of hit the limelight. It's been around treating um, humans and pets with CBD has been around for decades, but it's just kind of now uh, being shown some light. So research hasn't been really plentiful in this area, but there are some studies that have been completed. They are in the process of working on a bunch of studies so you can get information on all of that. Um, it has been used to treat a vast array of health problems in pets and humans, everything from uh, helping with the side effects of um, chemotherapy for cancer treatments to helping with arthritis, stress and anxiety. Uh, there's so many benefits that you can get. Uh, but of course, as with anything, you need to know what you're getting into, what you're putting into your body or your pet's body. So today I was able to speak with Odessa. She gave me some information about CBD oil, kind of a, a really basic what you need to know, um, as well as some information on how to find a high quality CBD oil for you or your pet. Um, or both uh, as Odessa will explain her products can be used for both humans and animals but um, you need to look as with anything there are different grades different qualities so you need to know what you're looking for if you think that this might be a treatment that you want to use for yourself or your pets so Odessa gives some great information and I'm really excited for you guys to hear it if you could just start with telling us a little bit about yourself and how you got involved in the pet industry sure so um I have always really, really loved animals. You know what I mean? Like I have, I have very few interests in life. You know, I love animals and rescuing them, um, and being an athlete forever till I die. And uh, <laughs> and that's kind of clothing shopping. <laughs> um, <laughs> full disclosure. So um, I used to be a bike racer way back in the day, and I was married to a bike racer. We were living in Spain. And we were good friends with Lloyd Landis and Dave Zaversky, also both pro racers. And when Lloyd started Lloyd's of Blood Bills, which is a CBD company for like team and athletes, um, he he uh, came to me about the pet, you know, uh, potentially starting a CBD company for pets because he knows. I mean, he witnessed it. He witnessed me flying, you know, stray dogs and cats from. Spain to Belgium, back to California, like all over the world, like, you know, he just knew that every day for me consisted of helping animals. Um, and so he's like, you know, he consulted in me about, you know, it would, do, what do you think about this product? Do you think it's safe and the whole thing? And I was uh, fully on board. I did some research and, and I, my goal in life is to always help animals in some capacity and, and hopefully with, with in all capacities you know what I mean so for me this is a dream because everything I do in my spare time is animal rescue you know like I fly to China I do, I'll tell you more about that later but um, that's what my life revolves around I have 23 animals of my own on my little farm here um, I have 10 rescue dogs and so I did a lot of research on the product and I was like yeah I am in because this is like you know this is a really good thing and I can't believe nobody's really discovered it yet. I mean, people are starting to discover it, but it's relatively recently, you know? And so um, that's when we formed Odessa's Essential Health for Pets. And so that's how I got in, involved in the pet industry. You know, I've always been involved in, in animal rescue for since I basically was all 12. <laughs> <laughs> well, that is awesome. First of all, thank you for everything that you do for animals. We're rescuers too. We currently have two dogs and uh, five cats and two, believe it or not, rescue hamsters. I don't know, even know how that happens, but it did. So um, we they ended up at our local shelter and, and now they live with us. <laughs> the hamsters. Yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> yes, and um, we work with a shelter in our local area, and they, the, one of the guys that works there, call and he's like, "I know this sounds really odd, but do you guys have room for a couple of hamsters?" And I just thought, "How do hamsters end up in an animal shelter?" But I mean, you know, because you have rescues too. It's it's not just dogs and cats; it's all animals. You know, need help in one form or another. So, um, kudos to you for sure for doing that. Oh, thank you. So uh, CBD oil, like you said, it's kind of new. Um, it's, I mean, it's, it's really, it's not. It's been around for so long, but people are kind of just really, you know, shining a light onto it for all its health benefits. So um, it's derived from the hemp plant, and that makes some people a little bit nervous to use it. Can you explain the difference between hemp, marijuana, and CBD oil? Yeah, it's funny you say it's been around for a while because it's actually been around for like hundreds of millions of years okay so cbd is short for cannabinoids and we all have cannabinoids in our bodies right we have these cannabinoids um humans plants and animals we have cannab cannabinoid receptors right and they're located through our bodies um as part of a endocannabinoid system which um, uh, is involved in a bunch of physiological i'm sorry processes including appetite uh, pain sensation, mood, memory, um, and uh, inflammation. So um, basically, we have this stuff in us, okay? And they found uh, <laughs> cannabinoid receptors in sea squid or squirt or whatever. They're like a squid or a squirt, something like that, but they basically uh, have been around for 600 million years. Wow. So, you know, yeah, and it's funny because, like, you know, I just said it too, and like it's relatively new on the scene, CBD, but as we evolve as, you know, human beings, we, we're always discovering things, right? We're discovering new drugs. Eventually, we're going to hopefully, you know, discover a cure for cancer. We've discovered aspirin. We've discovered all these things, and ultimately, everything comes from a plant, right? In the beginning, everything comes from this planet, right? We, have, we don't have medicine that we've taken from Mars or Jupiter. It all comes from here, and so... Um, CBD is no different. It's a cannabinoid. It's in our bodies, like, for example, melatonin. I'm going to talk about melatonin in a little bit because it's a really good analogy. Because um, what we're doing with CBD is we're introducing a little bit more of it into our bodies, you know, to boost the system that already exists. Okay, so back to your question, you asked me, are CBD safe for pets? And what's the difference? Oh, no, sorry, you asked me about um, what's the difference between hemp and, and marijuana. Um, so, CBD comes from the hemp plant, and there's no THC in it. Um, marijuana, on the other hand, um, is psychoactive, right? So it affects the brain, you know, and, and the thoughts and stuff. But this is, we're talking about, like, the body and bodily functions. That's what CBD um, helps. So, um, they're completely different. They come from the same family right of, of plants but they're completely different animals basically they're not the same at all they're part of the cannabis family um you know what happens i think that when i started doing my research on this i found that in the 1970s the government the u.s government um confused the two plants and like lumped them all together as one thing right um as like the same species and they made it a special one to try to scan it so, fast forward 45 years, you know, ahead, and here we are, and it's legal in 50 states. So we, you know, the government has recognized. I, I couldn't have raced my bike without melatonin because I had a hard time coming down after the races to sleep, you know, and I'm a little high strung anyway. And so um, I use it for sleeping. I still use it. I use it in tandem with. Oh, just is essential health. I think it's, it's the same thing that I give my dogs. I take it every night to sleep. Um, and it's just like a supportive thing, right? It's supporting what we already have inside us, right? It's not a hormone or anything, but it's just a natural thing. Natural. Absolutely, and that's, you know, when pet owners talk to me, because we use CBD oil with our dogs and our cats, um, and so when I'm asked about it, you know, that's like the go-to, that's everybody's first thing they say is, you know, oh, that comes from marijuana, I don't want to use that with my dog, it's not safe. So it is safe for our pets, correct? 100% safe, it's already in their body. 
it's already inside our pets. It's a naturally occurring thing that's in their bodies, it's in our bodies, it's in plants. And so it's 100% safe. And you mentioned, too, that there's no THC in it. It's not going to get your dog high or anything like that. So for anybody that's out there wondering, you know, if this is safe for your dog and if it's going to, you know, give them any kind of psychoactive reaction, it is absolutely not. Absolutely not. It's not going to harm your dog. There's no THC in our product. I mean, they're tiny, 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 tiny trace amounts. But, like, you know what a, you know what a company has to disclose on their packaging? that these crackers were made in a product that may have processed peanuts. Right. It's, it's kind of like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they, they come from the same plant family, but they're completely different plants. So um, I just feel like we, we, we have to blame the 70s. <laughs> 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 and for the flight that's ahead of us and convincing people that their dogs aren't going to get high off of our products. But, you know, and I tell people, I'm like, if you don't believe me, if you're not believing me, just take a take a whole dropper full, put it under your tongue, and tell me how you feel in an hour. You're not going to be stoned, so there's no reason why your dog's going to be stoned. You know what I mean? Because our 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 tincture, our bars, they're food grade, so you know, like I said, I take them too. Um, it's just, it's, it's yeah, it's completely safe. Yeah, absolutely. I, yeah. Okay, sorry. Continue. See, I ramble. <laughs> <laughs> so you <laughs> and you mentioned um, just briefly earlier, you know, a few of the benefits. What are some of the benefits that pet parents can get from using CBD oil for their animals? Um, it's really good for anxiety, like all different kinds of anxiety. But in particular, I have a lot of friends who um, had a really hard time driving in the car with their dog, and it really helped. It really helps. Like I have a lot of mountain biker friends who drive their vans up to Tahoe, and the, you know they want to bring their dogs with them on all their camping adventures and stuff. And a couple of them had a really hard time because their dogs got, you know, anxious in the cars, and um, it basically, you know, ended that. And then it helps with inappetence, um, inflammation. Uh, it, it helps with seizures. I don't exactly know the science behind that yet, but it truly effective. I have a, I'm, I'm using it on one of my dogs who's having, who has seizures and he hasn't had one. Um, it promotes bone growth and it helps sleep. It's Fantastic. Just, uh, yeah, lots of benefits. And you mentioned the car rides. We actually um, have friends who their dog has severe anxiety at the vet. He's fine in the car, but the minute they get to the vet, he just is super anxious. I don't know if it's all the different smells of all the other animals or if he had a bad experience at the vet, you know, years ago. But yeah. um, they use it for that. And they have it's it doesn't take away the anxiety 100 percent, but it makes it manageable. They can he's um, um American Bulldog and Husky Mix. He weighs over 100 pounds, so he's hard to handle, obviously, you know, when he's anxious and when he's pulling on a leash and jumping around. So it makes it manageable. You know, they can take him to the vet without having any major issues now. So um, lots of that, you know, kind of stress and anxiety issues. Pets are are quirky just like us, especially if you have rescues. You know, they've all been through things that we don't know about and you never know what's going to cause them stress or anxiety. So um, that's certainly one of the biggest benefits that we've found with our animals. Cool. Yeah, that's good to hear. Um, and like I said, you know, we have these cannabinoid receptors in our body. And so when you look at all the benefits from the CBD, that's what that cannabinoid system does in our body. So basically, you're just giving it a little bit more, right? You're just giving it a little bit more support. So, um, yeah, it's clear as the day is long that, the, that, that it works, you know? And like I was saying, I take melatonin to sleep at night, but I also take the CBD which has helped my knees a lot because, you know, I've been an athlete forever and I've, like, abused myself, like, jumping and running and skating and whatever, you name it, riding, and um, it helps my knees a lot. It's really, it's really been good for me. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, I know um, the other thing, we actually had a boxer um, who passed away a couple of years ago, but she had uh, really severe arthritis, but she also had a heart condition where her heart beat way faster than it should. So she was on all these prescriptions for her heart, and I wasn't sure what to give her for arthritis that, you know, was natural and would actually work, but wouldn't counteract any of her medications. We found CBD oil, and, you know, that really helped a lot for her. That was, it was fantastic with her. 
But I'm like, I'm so happy to hear that. You know, like, I believe in medicine, too. Like, I truly do. Like, there's a lot of things that, you know, we need medicine. I believe in it. But I'm not someone that only, you know, doesn't believe in taking drugs of any kind, you know, pharmaceutical drugs of any kind. But I think that CBD, like, in your situation, it, it works it, it's a complimentary thing. You know what I'm saying? Like, when, when you, I have a dog who's in heart failure, I have a dog with COPD, I have every, pretty, pretty much. <laughs> I, with 10 dogs, you must have a lot of, <laughs> a lot of issues. I do. You know, and, uh, and, you know, the prescription drugs are there for good reason. They do what they do, but there's a lot of, uh, there's some collateral damage with some of them, right? There's side of that. Absolutely. And the beauty, yeah, sorry, the beauty of the CBD is that there are no side effects. It's, you can't OD on it. You know, it's not going to interact with anything in a negative way. It's a naturally occurring thing inside our bodies, inside our dog's bodies. So, yep. And there are, uh, now, as we talked about, you know, they're kind of becoming more popular to find products for um, pets or humans, but there's different qualities, of course, as there is with everything. What should pet owners be looking for if they're shopping for CBD oil or products for their pet? Yeah, that's a really good question. I'm really glad you asked it because um, they should first consider the source of the hemp plant, right, where they where they took the CBD from. Because, um, like ours, for example, come from organic farms in Western Colorado. Um, you know, we we know exactly uh, what the soil contains where they're being grown. A lot of products come from the hemp. And CBD comes from like China or Russia, and in a lot of situations, they're grown in toxic soil. I mean, it's dangerous. You know, like I just really, really read the label and and be aware of where where it's sourced. And then the second uh, most important thing is the method of extraction that they use. So, you know, the CBD has to be extracted from the flower of the plant, um, and we use a CO2 extraction process, which is super clean and safe. Um, it doesn't involve, you know, adding anything. Like some companies use toxic solvents, like uh, I forget the I forget the scientific name for it, but basically it's like a lighter fluid. Oh wow! Alcohol. Yeah, and I think you know, I mean, lighter fluid can't can't be safe. Um, and alcohol, I would think that it would affect the you know the effectiveness of the of the plant of the CBD. I don't know, but ours is clean, right? So you want to make sure it's. Uh, they use a CO2 extraction process. Basically, what the consumer should do is just buy our product. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That okay. solves that problem, right? <laughs> and then they're safe. Okay, but the list continues. Um, you want to use, oh yeah, I already mentioned it, I guess. Like, you want to use a CBD uh, that comes from the flower because that's where it's the highest concentration and the best quality. And that's what we do. We, we extract it from the flower. Um, um, oh yeah, the CBD needs to be mixed with something, you know what I mean? And, and right. um, a lot of, some companies do different things that are fine. You know, we use hemp oil. Um, some use like the ethanol and flavoring, like different kinds of flavors that aren't necessarily natural and aren't really uh, the best. And I don't know for sure, but I think that again, that they would affect the, you know, the medicinal properties of the of the CBD. But I don't know, but um, I think it's better to use natural things. Absolutely. Right? Like use Some companies use coconut oil, which is also fantastic. Um, oh yeah, we're our product is third party tested, and that's really important because it would be like you know having the bank robbers guarding the bank. <laughs> you want to make sure. You know, and we want to make sure we want our product to be tested by somebody else, not us, because, you know, what if there's something we missed or, you know, it's just a, it's the safest way to go. So those are the main things. And also make sure on the label it says that this is essential health for pets. <laughs> oh, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but yeah, those are the main things. So obviously your product, you know, stands out from similar products and there's some things that pet owners um, need to look for. So we, we already covered, that was um, my next question, but you already took care of that. Uh, so um, 
I and then, then my just my last question. Um, congratulations on your recent local hero award. That's so fantastic, um, and you won that for your animal rescue efforts. So you talked yes. a little bit about it briefly in the very beginning um, that you helped with rescue efforts in China during the Yulin Meat Festival. Uh, can you talk a little bit more about the festival? Why you're so passionate, obviously about rescuing and and standing up for that cause, um, and what everybody else can do to help that stop the practice of eating dog meat. Yeah, okay, well, thank you. I appreciate your asking that. Um, I've been I've been involved in dog and cat rescue for over 20 years now, um, and I'm also the vice president of the board for a therapy farm for at-risk kids. We do animal therapy with at-risk kids. I've done that for 10 years now, too. Um, but the thing about Ewan is that, and I'm happy, I'm happy that Ewan put uh, the dog meat trade on the map. But Ewan is just one like week. They in Asia kill thirty torture basically torture and kill thirty five million dogs a year. And an estimated that four million cats a year. So when I speak torture, it starts from the day they're born. The conditions they farm them in are horrific. Every single cat and dog that's eaten in those countries that have like are sick was really sick. Um, they have every kind of disease you can imagine. And um, when they finally make it to the slaughterhouse, if they make it there alive, you know, they're transported, crammed in these cages. They cram them in so hard. They break their legs. They break their jaws. You know, they just shove them in by the neck. They break their neck. They're jammed in. So many of them. And then they drive for days and days, completely exposed to all the elements, which is usually extreme suffocating heat. Um, you know, and then in the winter, cold and rain and wind. Um, a lot of them are dead by the, the lucky ones are dead when they get to the slaughterhouse. And the unlucky ones are then tortured. And I I don't know how graphic you want me to be, but I could give some examples. I've been there. I know I've, I've been there personally many, many times. I've not been to Yulin. I've been to the meat market in Asia. And I've been to the slaughterhouses and I've seen what they do. Um, I don't know. Do you want me to tell you some examples? Or no, I'm not sure. No, way. if that's if you're comfortable sharing, that's fine. Okay. Well, a lot of the most common practices for the torture, and this is why. So, a Chinese visionary uh, that proclaimed, I think, and it was pretty recently, it was 2010, I think, that if you torture an animal for up to 40 hours, that's the goal. Um, and then eat it, it cools your blood in the summer. That's why the, that's why Yulin is on the summer solstice. Because, like, this, you know, the, the beginning of the summer, they want to have their blood cooled for the summer. And then it gives you, if you're a man, sexual prowess of some kind. I don't know. But, I mean, obviously, it's ridiculous. They're both completely ridiculous. Right. So think that science therapy. Anyway, so, um... What they do normally, they chop their paws off and they get to the slaughterhouse so that they can't run. And then they blow torch them alive or they skin them alive or they hang them up and just um, light them on fire or they boil them alive. The toy breeds they throw into grinding machines alive and they grind them up and they make powders for Chinese herbs. Um, I, don't, I tell everybody not to buy any kind of like, Chinese herbs because you never know what's in it. You never I mean, know, yeah. It, it, there's proof right now how they just looked at the bamboo and the rhinos and the, the tigers for medicinal stuff, right? So the thing is that this goes on all day long, every day, all across Asia. And it's particularly bad in Cambodia. It's really bad in China. They have calls where they have, they, they ground up all the stray dogs and they kill them in the most cruel ways you can possibly imagine. Um, I don't know what's wrong. I don't know what's wrong. There's lots of, like, Chinese activists over there fighting it. And the young people, from what I can tell, I've been over there many times. I've gone over to fly dogs back. And that's why I got that local hero award, because I thought so many, so many dogs back um, from the meat trade. I have one right here. It's an Aww. Um, <laughs> yeah, Ethel O.T. She's actually coming with me to the Lisa Vanderpump Gala on... Thursday in Los Angeles and in Hollywood because I don't know if you know who Lisa Vanderpump is, but she also is fighting the dog meat trade. Yes, you know? yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Ethel OG's coming with me. She's like, I found her 
on my last trip there, I was there with Slaughterhouse Survivors, this amazing group of women. I've never met people like these women. I mean, these are the Mother Teresas of dog rescue. These girls, our school teachers are expats uh, from Ireland, England, and um, New Zealand, I think. Um, and they're all there teaching English to school children, and they saw all the horrors that are happening, and they just started a dog rescue. And they're like hundreds of thousands of dollars in debt. And so if anybody wants to help end the dog meat trade, um, they should make a donation to Slaughterhouse Survivors. You can just uh, look them up on Instagram or Facebook. Um, really wonderful people. Anyway, these women dedicate every single moment of their spare time and all of their spare money. Like, they, um, two of the girls literally have a few pairs of jeans and a few t-shirts. A couple jackets. That's all they are. Wow. Because every time, every time that they make goes to these dogs. And so that's why I blew the dog's back for it. Um, but anyway, but, oh yeah, I found Ethel OG, this little dog. is She was in a Buddhist uh, refuge. You know, there's a lot of people. Oh yeah, that's where I was going. I want to say that, you know, there are people, there are lots of Chinese people, and I'm sure from other uh, countries in Asia that are trying to fight it, you know, but they're so vastly outnumbered. You know, they're, it, it, it's a David and Goliath situation. And so I feel like the rest of the world has to help. And I know a lot of people say to me, well, what about factory farming here with the chickens and the cows? And I'm like, you know, absolutely. We, we've got all of our stuff. That's, we've got a lot to fix here as well. You know, and I don't eat meat personally, but the thing is that we, at least we have some animal protection laws, you know, in this country. But they're loosely enforced, enforced at all in many cases, especially, you know, when we're talking about factory farming. But there, you know, it's okay to torture a dog out on the street, you know, to skin a dog alive on the street corner. It just, we can't, we can't. Okay, in my opinion, on the planet, we are only as good as our lowest common denominator, right? And if, if as a species, we're doing that to innocent creatures, I mean, what does that say about us? Absolutely. We're yeah. We're complete monsters. We're monsters. You know? I mean, I, and I don't want to be a monster. And so long as I feel like there's monsters out there doing this stuff, I feel like I'm a monster, too. And I'm like, I don't want, that's not acceptable for me. So I'm not going to go down without a fight. I'm going to spend the rest of my life, you know, doing what I can to end the dog meat trade. That's why we're going to the Lisa Vanderpump's event on Thursday, you know. Um, that's why Odessa's essential health for pets. That's another thing that makes us stand out from all the other companies. You know, this, this company was born out of passion. You know, we're giving a portion of every product sold to Compassion Without Borders which is another extraordinary rescue. They go uh, to Mexico and then Central California, and they take, they're here in my city in Santa Rosa, California. They take uh, some of the dogs that I bring back from China as well. Um, they're really amazing, amazing people, very compassionate. And they love people too, you know? Like that's, that's the thing is um, we love organizations that also love people because you can't, you know, I love animals to the end of time, but I also love people. And I feel like we can all just, you know, make a difference. We can't end animal cruelty without people, right? Absolutely, right. We all have to be teammates in this, you know? Um, so just know that if you buy one of our bars, oh, and by the way, I forgot to mention, when you asked how our products stand out from the rest, you know, our bars are non-GMO, which is really important to me. Um, and they're vegetarian to all of us in our company. Um, and they have added vitamins and minerals. And so they're like a little complete meal. Oh, and another thing, <laughs> our products are higher. Uh, they have a higher milligram than all the other products on the market of CBD. Oh, that yeah. is important. Yeah, absolutely. It's really important. Like my local feed store sells out every week because like, you know, there's people like that dog you just described you know, you'd go through like a whole bottle in a day. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I give it to my pot belly pig, so I'm grateful for the higher milligrams because I, you know, can use less. 
You can use less, yeah, which isn't, you know, if somebody has like a tiny little teacup Yorkie or something, it's not so important, but, you know, for those of us that have uh, multiple pet families and, you know, have some large breed dogs, it, it is crazy. Some of the treats out there, you know, in order for them to be effective, you have to feed like 12 treats a day to a, a dog the size of a Labrador and it becomes really expensive and, you know, it's obviously lots of ca- added calories and things like that. So um, that is important too when people are shopping for those products to look at the content. Yeah, that's it. That's exactly it. You know, we don't want it. Our ultimate goal is to help the animals, right? We don't want it to be cost prohibitive. So the higher milligram, it just makes sense to us because you can always just, you can always give less, right? Easy. So. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for your time today. You're such an inspiration, and I hope other people listen. And um, I will link to uh, Slaughterhouse Survivors and Compassion Without Borders. If anybody wants more information, um, they can reach out to to me or to you um, to get some information about what they can do to help with the dog meat trade. Um, I think we both are in agreement when we say adopt, don't shop. There's tons of dogs out there looking for great homes. So um, if anybody has any questions, they can send them our way. And if I can't answer them, I'll certainly send them to you. Well, thank you so much. I'm so honored to be here, and I'm so grateful to you for what you're doing. Like, thank you for spreading the word. I hope that you all are as inspired by Odessa as I am. I love what she's doing for animals, and if there's anything that you can do that you have questions about, uh, if you'd like to speak to me or to her, feel free to jump on our website, theoryofpets.com. There is a link below this podcast to Odessa's website as well. Reach out to one of us. Uh, We can certainly help you, give you any information that we can about whatever it is that you're trying to do. And if you're curious about CBD for your dog, as I mentioned, you know, and Odessa talked about, you really need to be sure that you're doing your research, you're looking into the quality of the product that you're considering buying. Um, If you have the opportunity to speak with a holistic veterinarian that's in your area, that would be great. There are some online, I know, that will do consults uh, over the phone or email as well. If you have questions that you'd like an expert's opinion on, uh, you can try that avenue. So uh, if you wouldn't mind jumping on Theory of Pets, dot com and leaving a review that would be great for me i appreciate you guys all listening um and i will be back with another hot topic next week